I am Spiral Woman, a genetics professor by day and superhero by night. It's my job to make sure that we don't overstep the moral boundaries of our genetics knowledge. Our knowledge must be used for good. Let's talk about genes. Genes are units of deoxyribonucleic acid, or DNA. Genes make up long chains of DNA, and one of these chains is called a chromosome. You have 46 chromosomes inside the nucleus of almost every single one of your cells. This is what DNA looks like. It's made up of two strands of repeating units of sugar and phosphate that spiral around each other to form a structure called a double helix. If you unwound DNA, it would look like a ladder, where the rungs are made up of nucleotide bases. The four nucleotide bases are adenine and thymine, which are a complementary base pair, and guanine and cytosine, another complementary base pair. DNA contains all the information necessary for the development and function of organisms. Scientists have a number of different technologies now to determine the order of these nucleotide bases in our DNA, which allows us to map a complete genome. This is called DNA sequencing or gene sequencing. Since a genome contains all of an organism's genetic information, the ability to sequence a human genome is indispensable in various branches of biological research and medicine. Gene sequencing is especially useful in matters of human health. Sequencing a person's genome gives us access to all their hereditary information. We can actually determine their predisposition to genetic disorders, diseases, or certain medical conditions. All this information is contained in the DNA in one cell nucleus. Scientists' ability to sequence the human genome is constantly becoming more powerful, more efficient, and less costly. That means that the gene sequencing technology is more widely available. One possibility is allowing future parents to screen their genetic information before having a child. On the one hand, this could provide valuable information about the future health of the child before they're born. Analysis of the genes of an embryo would yield predictors of medical conditions a child could face. Parents could be alerted about potential life-threatening illnesses, and doctors could determine the child's predisposition to illnesses like Huntington's disease or breast cancer. But on the other hand, depending on what traits are screened for, gene sequencing also poses the risk of genetic discrimination. So the question is, should parents be allowed to screen sperm, eggs, or embryos, and for what traits? Alright, that's all for today, but tomorrow we'll be discussing more of the moral controversies surrounding genetics and genomics. Okay class, let's get started. There are many far-ranging applications for genetic testing beyond medical health, and these come with their own controversies. First of all, does a person have the right to know their own genetic information? At what age? And how much information? Their whole genome? In a medical context, it's valuable for a patient to know their hereditary information and genetic predispositions, and sharing this information with a doctor can also allow for possibilities of personalized medicine. With certain conditions, it's also possible to preemptively treat certain conditions or take preventative measures. But what about in other non-medical contexts? Because gene sequencing is becoming a less costly, more readily available technology, the possibility arises of screening genes for questions that aren't purely medical or health related. Among the genes that are phenotypically expressed are those that code for traits of appearance like hair color or eye color. 
A person's gene sequence can also provide clues about their personality or abilities. Should parents be allowed to screen for looks and abilities as well? In the case it's decided that a person does have the right to all their genetic information and their child's, the danger with this is that people would try to screen for the perfect or the most beautiful or the most talented baby based on an embryo's genes. Is this ethically fair or is it wrong? What about young children? Should parents guide children towards activities or careers in line with the child's abilities as predicted by their genes? The problems associated with this concept are that the traits predicted in our genes aren't necessarily sureties. That is, though a person may have the genes for a particular trait, these genes may or may not be manifested in the phenotype. As well, due to the environment in which a person is brought up, epigenetic or environmental triggers and mechanisms also cause certain genes to be turned on or off. The harm is therefore that people would be discouraged from pursuing certain careers because they don't believe they have the ability for it or other similar cases, as dictated by their genes. In these cases, it's necessary to determine whether the potential benefits outweigh the harms of genetic testing and disclosure of genetic information. It's extremely clear that gene sequencing provides people with indispensable information. But the challenge of this valuable new technology is how to incorporate all this new information into our daily lives while still remaining ethically correct and fair. Studying genetics and genomics gives rise to an array of ethical dilemmas, perhaps more than any other field of science, because it concerns the very nature of people, identity, and life. Whatever life holds in store for me, I will never forget these words. With great power comes great responsibility. This is my gift, my curse. Who am I? I am Spiral Woman.